You're watching Three Pound Fishing, sponsored by these great companies. Hey folks, thanks for joining me. And today we are going to be going live with LiveScope. That means we're going to be putting tons of fish, vertical fishing over brush piles by using LiveScope. Folks, if you haven't seen this fantastic technology, you have got to check it out. In this episode, we are definitely going to be talking a lot about it. So do me a favor, please subscribe. Don't forget to share the videos. And again, we're doing guided trips this summer. So book now. You can go to 3 Fishing at gmail.com. And we've got that new merch at 3 Fishing.com. So thanks again. Let's put some slabs in the boat. It's going to be a beautiful day, folks. Unbelievable day. Actually, in the middle of the summer, we've got a high of 70 degrees today. Right now, it is 58 degrees. It doesn't get much better than this. Thanks for watching. So you probably have noticed that you've coming in from a different angle with the camera. Maybe you haven't. Today we're trying a bunch of different stuff out. We've got a different angle on the boat, which is going to be pretty cool to add that. You're going to be a lot closer than what we were before. But also, obviously finding new crappie, that's going to be new today. We're on a different lake, completely different. That's always exciting. I think you definitely have to get out to the different lakes around your area and try them out. So. Let me show you what I'm gonna be fishing with today primarily. I am gonna throw out some jigs here as well, but this is my leader. Again, we've got an eight pound high vis line going into a number three ball swivel, a number seven split shot, and then a number four hook. This is on an eight pound clear line right down there. Don't know if it makes any difference. A lot of people are asking me, does it matter if I use high vis down there? I've used high vis down there several times, caught just as many fish, just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable now that I've had this experience with live scope. So, Let's put some slabs in the boat. Let's try it out. It's interesting. I don't know where they're at at all. We're going to find out. So right now I see that a lot of the fish are at 10 foot, which makes sense. And we've got a great little pile here that has a lot of fish on it. Definitely need to get a jig out here. Oh, that's a good fish. Feels like a good fish. Oh, that's our first fish of the day, folks. That's a great fish. That's a great start to an episode of finding fish. That's a good, nice black. That's probably about a 12 inch. Let's measure that up. And these fish are pretty, hugged pretty tight to these brush piles right now. Let's see. That's a, that's a perfect 12. Hope you guys can see that shine on it. That's a beautiful fish here. We're gonna let them go today, but that's number one, 12 inch. Not a bad start, I tell you what. <laughs> there it goes. So the first thing I like to do when I'm looking for summer crappie is try to go to points. Points are critical. Uh, and any finding any on any new lake, just finding new structure, it's the, probably the easiest place to go to on a lake. So, you know, you see a lay down right here. You know, I don't see any fish on it. Um, but you're just going to go to points and you're going to, you're scanning, scanning for some structure, scanning for some shadows of fish. Okay, so this is a really good mark right here. I've got some shadows, I've got some structure, and then I have a weed edge. You can see the weed edge coming up right now underneath the boat. So, this is something that I think we're going to fish, um, but that's what you're looking for. You're looking for structure on a point, um, anything near some shallow water that allows those fish to go up and come back um, as the sun goes up. You know, we're going to have a bluebird day today, and this is uh, this looks like a good spot to start. You know, I see a lot of fish on this structure that's coming up. When I do a search with LiveScope, I do it at about 30, 35 foot, and then. When I get close, I hone it in to the 18. So before we get on top of it, I'm gonna do the active captain. Check out that video I did on active captain. It makes just the perfect videos. There's definitely fish at 10 foot. We are smack dab and they are good looking size fish. I'm going to accommodate. Okay, we are back this way. Now my rule of thumb is you don't get on top of a pile unless they're at least nine foot deep. These fish right now are sitting right at 10 foot. 
And we have got a bunch of fish right here, folks. That's showing great. And uh, there comes one that's moving pretty quickly. Probably. Well, there's one right there. I didn't get it on active captain, but it's a uh, it's a little guy. Kind of fun though. Small little white actually. It looks like no, nah, it's a black. It's a good fish right there. That's how you find structure, summer structure. Very simple. Use that side imaging. That mega is fantastic. Then just come right up on it. Come right up on it. If those fish are deeper than nine feet. Do not hesitate. Now I still like to use buoy, so when I, I'm gonna hone in on the boy, they're coming right at it. Big fish here, we're gonna see how big they get. And I think they ate my, there's some big fish in this. Look at those big fish right there, sitting right underneath us. So, at this point, we know where the fish are at. So we're gonna go ahead and throw that buoy off. We're making sure that it stays clearly away from our pile. You can see it fall here, see it fall right there. Actually hits the back end of that pile, which I didn't see. That was a mistake. This is a big pile. There's actually a pile on the other side of that buoy. I said, don't hit the pile and I hit the pile. It happens, folks. Those fish will still be around it. There he is. Did you see him come up? This is a good fish. Where am I? This is a good fish. Yeah, that's a real good fish. Look at that, folks. Is that a white? That is a white. Well, you just don't catch many white at Lake of Egypt, but this is a solid fish, 12 and a half inch. That is a, bam, that's a good fish. Beautiful, thick, active. And I'll tell you what, there's several of them down there. So let's, let's get back to it. Let's let these guys go. I love summer fishing. I love fall fishing. I love, I guess I just like all kinds of fishing. It doesn't really matter what it is, but uh, you know, my favorite tactic is definitely brush pile fishing, brush pile fishing. And um, you know, I don't mind throwing a curly tail. I don't mind throwing a float, but brush pile fishing is what I love to do. I met some, that's another one. You know, I met some great people at the at the dock today. I'll share a picture at the end of this if they send me one. That's another slab. Gosh dang it. Just good fish over here. That's a beautiful fish. Look at that. Come on now. You can't beat that. That is awesome. Hey, check out the new low jersey. They just sent it to me. Gave me a short sleeve and they gave me a a uh, long sleeve obviously and a couple other stuff it's it's just a pleasure to be a pro staffer for low boats and i cannot tell you enough to if you have an interest in a new boat and this is not a sales pitch folks i've had two now low boats so you know i love them and i had them before i was a pro staffer um i just think it's the greatest it, it it's just a great medium between quality and price and it's it just sits there perfect for me wide um, this deck is huge just huge check out the low stinger 198. our water temperature today is uh, 74 degrees so you know it's just such a beautiful day out here folks i mean it just doesn't get any better for a summer you know middle of june day to have these cool temperatures it's just it just can't beat it i encourage everybody to go out there and fish those lakes that you don't typically fish just to kind of mix it up 
you know, a lot of these lakes around here have GPS points that make it a lot easier to find those summer crappie. Um, just by going to those points, you don't have to do any searching at all. You know, you can utilize your Google Maps, which I've done an episode on that before. Um, and that's honestly how I'll start a lot of times. Finding these summer crappie is just, you know, use what they provide you. Um, and then after that, if you want to explore some more, use side imaging and all that great stuff. Um, and I'm going to show you how that looks today on the monitor. You just can't make a meet all the time, folks. I'm definitely going to be trying to jig out here. They're, I can see where they're at. They're right on top of it. See how they go? Did you see how they went? Hopefully I got the, oh, that, this probably doesn't look like it did. Wow. He had it for a little bit, but you watched nothing but those marks moving on live scope. And I never felt it, but eventually I did feel it. But that's, a, that's another 12 inch fish. Boom, that's a good fish. Maybe 11 and a half, but really solid. On my jig rig, I'm using a double you know, jig setup, obviously. Um, two of them, they're a little close today than I actually prefer. Um, but rather than retie, I'm just going with it. I'm trying to mix up some colors here. I'm going with the mermaid right now, the, the whatchamacallit. It's been a, a favorite color of mine. We're gonna give her a shot. And then I'm going with the baby shad shape with the, uh, I believe that's bluegrass. So we're going to start with, we're going to go with this right now over this pile. That was fun to watch. There's one right there. Let's see what color. This is a good fish. Ooh, they like the smaller presentation and the bluegrass. That's probably the best. Man, I don't know. It's skinny, but it's 12 and a half, every bit of it. That's a good fish. Thank you, guy. Beautiful looking fish. They like that bluegrass. Let me show you. Let that fish go. Um, they like that bluegrass. And that's a small presentation. So that tells me a lot right there with that one bite. Um, so that's what I'm going with right now on the bottom. I got that whatchamacall on top. Now, it's a bigger presentation. So um, I might even switch them around to see if, you know, typically they always want to hit the bottom. Don't know why. Occasionally you'll get one on the top. But always seems like the, the heavy duty hitter is always going to be on the bottom. So. We might switch those up, just see if that affects it, but it might be just the shape issue or a uh, size. Wow, there's this good fish right here. You know, I wanna show you guys as much of the live scope as I possibly can. I know that really makes it a lot more interactive. You can watch that minnow swimming around there. It's pretty fascinating. See, now that fish is on that top bait. And I didn't like it. I think that's more of a scent thing. I really do. You know, it's either my touch of it or something has spooked it out when they're that active on a bait and then they decide not to bite, bite it. it. It really tells me a lot when the minnows have that happen. Now we got a big fish on our minnow rig now. One shooting over to it. Ooh, got one on my... Now one of the tactics you can use in the summertime just to intrigue them just a little bit more, look at this, I got a fish on. Oh yeah, baby. That didn't take long. Look at that. Wham! Wow. 
Ooh, I'll let that guy go right there before he bleeds all over my boat. Good fish. Good fish. One of the tactics you can also use during the summertime if you find that the bite's getting tough is, you know, obviously using power bait, nibbles, nibblets, or whatever. Um, those are great things to kind of keep that fish on there just a little bit longer. Yeah, there's a whole school of them underneath us right now. This, wow. <laughs> Check out this white. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Still kind of skinny right now, but that's 12 and a half every bit of a 12 and a half right there. Bam, that's a good fish. As you can see, all the fish behind this standing timber, you can see a couple of fish on that standing timber right there that you probably could draw up. But look at the school of crappie right behind it. And that's what we just caught that fish on. Just They're just all swimming around in there. Uh, sometimes those are, I mean, there's just a lot of fish in here and they look like they're all really good size. Look at that guy swimming around there. See if I can lift this up here and intrigue him to come after me. Look how he made the turn. Didn't want it though. Let me check a minnow check there real quick. No minnow. So I made the turn for the hook. <laughs> or my minnow fell off right there, which is always possible. Um, you can see how you can completely target a fish. I raised that up just, to, just for that one fish. There's a lot of bait fish in here. That's bait fish probably right there. Um, hence all the crappie. We're coming back into the timber here. Wow, that just thumped this jig. Wow. <gasps> that was a big copy too. I saw the body flash. Wow. So that time I used the high vis line and I saw it. It's a smaller fish, but man, it inhaled that, that Jinko fishing bait right there, man. Probably one of the smaller fish of the day, but still that was fun. All I did was watch that high vis line and I still think there's a use for high vis line. I was playing with the idea of switching it all to clear, but right there proves you're not going to see everything on live scope, and it doesn't hurt to have that extra tool. But you guys knew that already, right? Come on now. Whenever I see a lot of movement or a, a quick movement, usually he's telling me that those fish, eh, small fish there, um, could possibly be moving towards my bait. Especially, you know, I, don't, I can't follow it on live scope all the time but I'm, I'm very aware when a fish starts to dart towards something. Wow. Well, there's our first top jig hit. All right, well, that's going to end it for this episode, folks. I appreciate it. Check out these slabs. This is a beautiful white fish. This is another skinny 12-inch. Beautiful fish on a jig, brush, a uh, bluegrass. I'm gonna let that guy go. That's just a pretty fish, wow. Interesting, it's got some leech, leeches in its mouth. Anyway, thanks for joining. Great day, finding summer crappie. That doesn't get any better than that.